For one final time this season, Brian and I will get you set for the names that you need to target on DraftKings and at the betting window. The championship race is here. Uh, Brian is coming to you live from Las Vegas. We will break it all down tonight on The Angle of Pursuit. Ross Chastain used the wall all the way around this racetrack. Logano has been the class of the field. Check out the big brain on Brad. Yeah, I need to change my underwear. Brian Twining, we did it. We started way back in February talking about Daytona. And now we're at Phoenix, the final race of the NASCAR season. The championship four is ready to be decided. Uh, major shouts to everybody who's been along for the ride, everybody who has supported us, who has been a, a guest on the show, all that good stuff. Brian and I uh, will be back next week to break everything down once the championship is decided, but then we will take a much needed break. We will uh, reassess. We will try and come back between now and then to, uh, you know, update you on championship odds when those start dropping uh talk some of the silly season stuff with driver movement when we figure out all the final stuff talk about all that thought all those thoughts if there's guests you want to see let us know down in the comments chris wormy Derek yoder some of the others will obviously make an appearance uh but brian how the hell are you how's vegas treating you I'm doing great, man. Yeah, Vegas is treating me pretty well. I'm I'm up a decent amount so far this weekend. I uh, I got to cash a Justin Allgaier pretty significant plus money matchup against JHN tonight in the Xfinity Series. Luckily, because he definitely did not have a car as good as Hunter Nemechek. Uh, but you know, like I'm here for one reason and one reason only, and it's to literally empty the holster for the last Cup Series race of the year. I was telling you prior to jumping on here, like I may do the unthinkable for myself and just like completely ditch uh, the normal sports book I'm at, the Westgate tomorrow during football to go uh, line shopping and hit hit circa hit like stations casinos depending on who has the best numbers for tomorrow's race because it's the last race of the year. I've had a lot of fun this year. We may be down in the betting card, you know, for our full, for our full season, but you know, we're, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a better to have fun. Like this is money that I'm willing to spend and I would much rather spend it for sweating NASCAR races than a lot of other things. So yeah, I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, qualifying was a little bit surprising, but I think that this gives us a pretty good opportunity to get some decent numbers on guys who are still going to be strong. Uh, yeah. Come, so come before we day. drive in and break down all the things that is uh draft Kings, and then obviously look at the updated betting window, we have some interesting decisions to make. Obviously qualifying yeah. was at later time. Uh, practice was, or practice was later. Qualifying was earlier. Yeah. more in line with what the race is going to look like. But we did get to see a lot of the cars on the track at the same time, which I think helps kind of get a gauge of where we are. So I guess we kind of have to cobble it all together with a, uh, with the few, yeah. um, you know, races that we've seen in the next gen cup, next gen car uh, at Phoenix and just kind of mush it all together to get any sort of um, understanding of how we expect all these guys to drive. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important to note, like, so they did a post qualifying interview with Ross Chastain today. And I think something he said rings true for the two cup series championship drivers of uh, Christopher Bell and Ryan Blaney, who didn't make the final 10 guys in, in qualifying order is that last year Chastain qualified outside the top 20 and he was still able to finagle, you know, a top five finish there. And I think, yeah. you know, what you saw Ryan Blaney, Dale Jarrett hit on it uh, post race show in Xfinity, like, Blaney qualified outside the top 10 last week in Martinsville and whooped everybody's butt there. Christopher Bell has shown multiple times already this year. He's able to drive through the field when he has a car good enough, and he loved his car yesterday. It, these guys were not off the pace by that much either. I mean, we're talking about a 10th in a single lap run right. when, you know, Phoenix, one mile track, like we're going to get a lot of laps here. So I am not worried at all about those two guys, you know, and if the books – adjusted in our favor like i definitely want to get the value while you can because 
over the long run, we saw it in Xfinity. Justin Allgaier, he spins on lap one or two. He's all the way to the back of the field. Dude's competing for the win at the end of the race. And Sam Mayer, he didn't have a car all day. And then all of a sudden he's up there at front and you have the four championship contenders restarting one through four on the final restart. And I, I expect much of the same tomorrow for cup. So, um, you know, I, I definitely want to get in on the value. And then I am very happy. If you saw my tweet yesterday, I hit William Byron in a matchup over Kyle Larson at plus 170 here at Superbook, which is looking absolutely incredible right now. I wish I could go back there and sell it for double my bet, but of course they're not going to do that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, overall, I'm just excited for tomorrow. I am ecstatic for tomorrow. I plan on parking myself and enjoying the hell out of the race. Uh, for those of you that are into Chris Wormy's previous poll, unfortunately, because he will be at the track, he mentioned on Stay Green there will be no pre-race poll. But I believe they're going to tweet some stuff out if they have any updates to their picks and stuff, which is always yeah. Extra and I nuggets also, just. To... I was just going to say they they also uh, like either Todd or him will tweet out a link to their their like website or newsletter that they write where they'll give out. Uh, their best bet. And I think he said he was going to do like another pick or two, but yeah, yeah. De definitely check that out. Cause he's one of the smartest guys in the space and somebody who we, we often connect with to get his opinion on which yeah. sides we should be leaning. So let's look at DraftKings and let's run through it. Uh, I don't like that one. Let's try this one. There we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, okay. So we have four drivers or I guess, Three, and then I'll mention the three and the 10K too, just to run through them. So Kyle Larson starting fourth, 11-5. Ryan Blaney starting 15th at 11-3. Byron, put it on the pole. Um, if history repeats itself, he will join Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, and Chase Elliott as the fourth straight driver to pull it and win the championship. Yeah. So we'll see when we get to the betting card what we do there. Christopher Bell, 10-8. So as you can see, they just smushed them all up here. And then Denny Hamlin starting sixth at 10-5. And, and Truex starting second at 10-2. So a bunch of heavy hitters. Uh, obviously, spending up will be required. It's just a matter of how you do it. Um, I guess, Brian, do you buy William Byron? Are you still riding the hot hand with Ryan Blaney, who, despite not qualifying amazingly, was one of the best cars during practice and as the long run went along, just got better and better and better. And obviously, like we talked about, it was a little, little later in the day, so it, it's not true to kind of tire wear and kind of expectations yeah. there, but Dude's been so good, and they've been giving him a rocket ship. And um, as Chris Wormy pointed out, full full tank with Phil pointed out, Ryan Blaney is getting all of the attention from Penske Garage, and that's something that he's never been able to do. So I fully expect him to have a really good car. Obviously, Christopher Bell loved his car prior, prior to everything. So I guess of the playoff four, is there a name or two that you're really compelled to uh, – attack and then with denny and truex kind of mixed into the same range are you interested in going to non-playoff drivers this early uh or is this a playoffs or bus kind of kind of section of the uh player pool so i think building a lineup this week i think two of the four guys are probably going to be the first and second finishers or maybe second or third however you want to put it in that way and i think finding those two drivers is important and look i kind of downplayed william byron coming into this week you know we talked about how he was nervous uh coming to the end of martinsville but when this guy has the pit stall that he's gonna have and he's starting on the pole and the there is group. nobody yeah there is nobody in the sport who i trust more in a crunch time situation than this 24 team so yeah. like i I would rather have Byron than Larson, even with the potential of losing placements, just knowing how good he looked. He's got a good history here. When he started on pole this year, I th only once he's finished outside the top five. Like this guy is going to be there at the end and he's going to lead laps. He's going to, 
have that pit stall, which even if he falls back a little bit, say we get a late race overtime restart, and it comes down to who can get off pit road first, it's probably going to be him. So, yeah, yeah, I think Byron is I'm more than willing to pay up for that. And then I think you got to pick between uh, Blaney or Bell just for the placement points because, you know, you're going to need that along with fast laps. I, Yeah, Larson, but I don't know. I have a hard time going to both HMS guys because when it comes down to the end, they're going to completely ignore the fact that they're teammates and they're going to battle for a win and who knows what's going to happen there. So yeah, I, for me, I, I would like to build a lineup with Blaney and Byron because I still think Blaney's going to be extremely good and he's going to work his way through the field again. And then you just got to scrounge for the scraps. So it's funny that you say that because obviously oh, no. doing this together as much as we have our brains <laughs> are yeah. far too similar when it comes to this stuff. Blaney and Byron were the two names that I absolutely am enamored with. Yeah. Obviously, uh, I am a Willie B. Stan. Uh, that dude has been absolutely incredible. He puts his car where it needs to be. I can't see him having like a horrendous day where like he chased Elliott's, uh, you know, like when he was in the championship four, all of a sudden he's finishing 26. Like, you know, maybe something goes wrong. Uh, I will say he had, a, there, he had a terrible race last week and he yeah. still finished. What was it? 12th or 13th. Yeah. But like he needed to have a good day and it, the car was just not there, but obviously they nailed yeah, the setup the car wasn't there. when they nail the setup. He has a great day. So yeah, Blaney, Blaney and Byron are the two that I want to try and squeeze in and make a lineup. I will say that the in trucks, the um, the winning lineup did not have many or maybe like one playoff driver. Um, wow. But obviously that tra- that race was a big fucking <laughs> shit show. So, um, Tr- Hamlin Truex, I think. I, I mean, at least for me, I, I have a hard time getting to them because they're not in the playoff four. I, I don't trust Truex in terms of his speed. I, I know he qualified no. second and maybe I'll look like a dummy with egg on my face, but he was slow in practice, obviously a different environment. Um, he does have a good sp- history, I guess here, but at the same time, like you're saying, I, we haven't seen it from him. And what is the motivation here yeah. to put in a full day's race? And I think there's other places that make a little more sense. So, um let's dive into the 9k or i think we have some interesting debates i think we'll start with joey logano who both of us are excited about both of us think will be a factor when we get to the end and um should be somebody that we probably end up gravitating towards it might be a little more challenging to find a logano pairing you might have to go logano um logano and blaney and then find a way to get an early dominator uh, obviously, Kevin Harvick lived up to the expectations by a lot of the betting community. Qualified third, looks good. His number is significantly shorter at this point when we talk outrights. Uh, Tyler Reddick, I'm not really sure what to make. Um, I, he seemed very frustrated and down on his car, but then gets it in the top 10. Um, I, I'll I mean, just say that his qualifying lap is indicative of the type of racing I think we're going to see out of him tomorrow. Like there is, there is nothing to lose from this team. So he could win the race or he could be one of the first guys that wrecks out. Um, You know, he, he's always pushing the edge. And now that he's not in the battle for a championship, he, he can go over the edge a little bit. And obviously I don't think he'll ruin, uh, or at least you hope he doesn't ruin one of the championship drivers days, but yeah, to me, he's a little bit too risky. And I feel like, there could be a point too, especially in stage two or stage three, where he just gets frustrated with the car not pushing the way he wants, and he just settles for twelfth and just doesn't really care. Because um, obviously yeah. he was slow in his in his five lap run, but then when he got ten, fifteen, and twenty, he got a little bit better. But even then, he was kind of like a tenth place car. So I'm kind of with you. He's probably someone I'd rather fade. Brad Keselowski rounds out the nine k range. Obviously, didn't qualify. Went to the birth of his child but um should be racing tomorrow as all indications uh point two pakra seem to indicate that happening obviously uh you guys will have more information as you're watching this so uh, if he races for me i am very interested in him starting where he is i think he could have a good day i think a top 10 day is well within the range of outcomes um 
But if it's not him, you know, I think I am guessing Custer is listed somewhere else. Who's going to be, who would be the driver for him? Obviously got yeah. the win in the Xfinity and, and won in the Xfinity championship. So, you know, we'll if Custer see what... has to drive for him after seeing the way that they were partying. After yeah, I was going to say, does tonight, he, have to pass he a, is pass a complete fan. in order to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I would not want to put him in my lineup. Like he's going to be dealing with a full on hangover tomorrow. If he has to try mm-hmm. this car. Yeah. So for me, it's Logano and Brad K. If he runs, uh, are you in, are you that, is that the, the two drivers in this range for you? Yeah, it's, it's definitely Logano I'm interested in, but it's going to be difficult if you're, if we're sticking to our guns and, you know, putting in two of the four championship guys, cause yeah. they're so expensive. And, you know, I was mentioning this before we jumped on here, but I do see a world where the championship four drivers, they race behind Kevin Harvick without having to affect his final race. And as long as he's not affecting the championship battle, I am now a little more accepting of the possibility that Harvick could ride off into the sunset with a win here. So I think he makes for an interesting potential pivot because a lot of people I don't think are going to want to put him in their DFS lineup just because traditionally it's a championship driver that wins here and the championship guys are all really good. Their cars are all really fast. And you have the guys Bell and Blaney who are starting outside the top 10 that offer a ton of placement points. I have no interest in going to Harvick. I don't think I'm not in agreement with you. I think it, I think we see like, Maybe maybe one driver in the top five that that is not a playoff driver, but I think I think for the most part, like the top three spots will all be playoff drivers, which like we saw in Xfinity where it was just top four at the end. So I, that's my expectations. I'm not. I have no interest in Harvick, but um, if you want to go there, I wouldn't. I know that that's a that's a decision you can make. Uh, Eight thousand dollar range, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch was good in five and ten lap, but then really fell off um, as the runs got along. That's concerning. Um, it's just he's he's very the much the story of RCR's just, year. Yeah, park it and kind of ride around in eighteenth or sixteenth yep. place and not really stress. Chase Elliott, I don't know. I think he's ready for vacation and to prep for next year. Obviously, he would like to have a good run here and get some hey, momentum. I hear. The snow is starting to build up in uh, Colorado, so mm-hmm. it's probably getting those, those yeah, it's snowboards ready. Yeah, season for sure. <laughs> uh, Ross Chastain, 84, and Chris Buescher, uh, 81, starting in the top 10. Um, oh, and then we'll throw Gibbs in there, too. He's 8K. This is the range I think we have to decide if there's any interest there. Um, they're all sort of compelling, I think Busher is definitely a clear third of those three. We saw how good uh, Chastain could be last year. Obviously qualified pretty decently. Um, had a good run in uh, in practice. Seventh and five lap, tenth and six, uh, sixth and ten lap, eighth and fifteen. You know, and then he was actually the one of the few cars to run thirty laps, and he was the best there. So. Uh, in front of Byron, in front of my boy Chasey Briscoe. Um, interesting group. Ty Gibbs, obviously, we talked a little bit about him. Any any interest in getting to these trio, or um, are they starting probably too far forward and costing too much for how we want to build a lineup? I think for the the way that we've already kind of revealed the way that we're going to build our lineup, these guys may be out of the picture, but if you're trying to get – weird with your stuff like i i think chastain makes a lot of sense i mean he's been good at these shorter flat tracks he was really good at auto club he's showed really well at phoenix last year clearly he's unloaded with decent speed because he looked good in practice too so the when you combine the two you know good qualifying effort looks good in practice like we've seen this kind of before with him where when he unloads with a good car he's going to maintain track position and you know i i he, he, they're going to want to go out on a high note with how disappointing I think the season when it, when it turned after he had the discussion with, with Hendrick and all that crap that went on there. Like when he basically snipped his balls, uh, Chastain, he's got to regain that, that racing style in my opinion. And this would be a perfect way to do it. You go out on a high note and you enter 2024, you know, 
looking forward to another potential championship run. As somebody who will be interested in Ross Jesse, and I kind of hope he stinks, but I, I honestly don't know how much of an impact that'll make <laughs> into uh, into early life. Yeah, well, here. exactly. Uh, I do think he makes sense there if you want to do like the Blaney Logano thing, or maybe like one high priced guy and then a couple of kind of the yeah, like eight middle, to nine middle tier dudes. Yeah, I think he'd be fine. Uh, let's dive into the sevens. Bubba Wallace look fast, look good. Uh, obviously qualified top five looking good. My boy Briscoe, I still believe, I know he didn't qualify great, uh, but he was fast, uh, as on the long run. I think he will ultimately be fine. I think, I think he is somebody that I'm going to be very interested in, uh, given where he's starting. Maybe it'll be stupid, but I think he'll be very under owned. Um, and I think he'll absolutely crush it. Almarola, not quite as optimistic but still pretty optimistic i you know starting 28th obviously don't love that but i i think the shr guys will find a way to be fine when it comes to race day and they do well on these kinds of tracks uh i will say he was yep. slow in 5 10 and 15 but was able to find speed in 20 and th- uh 25 laps so maybe they were yeah, testing nice. I was just going to say like a guy like Al Marola, I, if this, if we have extended green flag runs, I think he makes a ton of sense yeah. because th- this is kind of his forte. Uh, we've seen it before with him where he's, he's been really good at New Hampshire, um, which is, you know, some would say is probably the, the closest, I guess you could say to Phoenix yeah. just in terms of, you know, racing style. And that's probably his best track. So uh, clearly, you know, the results the last two times here aren't exactly you know, breathing confidence in the 10 car here, but the fact that he's starting where he is at a medium price point, like I, I think he's going to find himself in a lot of lineups. Yeah. I think they're both compelling, especially if you want to do what Brian and I are doing, where you start with two high price guys. I think they make a lot of sense. Are you in on Alex Bowman? Nope. I'm completely out on, honestly, I'm, I, I'm out on the other half of the Hendrick garage. Like I feel like they've checked out and they're just both kind of like, uh, whatever we're just gonna let our teammates go for the championship and we're just here to turn laps get out of here clean like and then get, they're looking forward to 2024 already he's somebody that i'm interested to see what his future looks like obviously he's shown the ability to win races and be good but he's also in a really good car and i could see he seems like somebody that we could be talking next year where if this stuff continues and he has another frustrating season where some of the rumors start swirling about a potential hot seat. I don't know. Just throwing it out Ooh. there. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, I'm wondering. He, he's, it, but it, you know, if it was just a year from hell for him and Chase, then maybe that's what it was. Uh, 6K, Daniel Suarez starting 16th at 69. Eric Jones, uh, 7th. Austin Dillon, 21st. Austin Sindrick, 27th. Ryan Priest, 12th. Um, Dinger and then Stenhouse and then oh, and then Haley round out the 6k. Um, I think Haley is done with Colleg and I think he is just mentally, <laughs> yeah, done. Uh, I think it's gonna, it's uh, they say, uh, Daniel Hemrick's gonna take a spot for next year. Yeah. Um, the fact that Priest showed some speed and the fact that Harvick was really good makes me feel even better about Almarola and about um, Briscoe for what it's worth. I think they'll be able to get those cars to where they need to go. Um, but in this like 6K range, is there a name or two? Because obviously this is where we're going to have to, I'm sure we'll end yeah. up maybe a couple of these guys. Is there a name or two that you are that you could talk yourself into being sort of interesting? I guess it would be Cindric because he's starting 27th. Like I, it's hard to get to Priest at 12th because, you know, it yeah, he's cheap, but he has a much higher likelihood of moving backwards than he yeah. does of moving forwards in my opinion, and the fact that he's probably not going to run fastest laps either. So you're running the risk that he actually moves backwards and actually costs you points. Where yeah. Cindric, if he can just move up inside the top 20, like you're looking at decent points there. So uh, I like Cindric in DFS. I, I do like Priest in the betting market. We'll, we'll re 
you know, we'll reassess the numbers there, but I do think that he's somebody to potentially target there. And then the one guy out of this group that I am in full out fade mode, if we find matchups, that's got to be Eric Jones. He looked like absolute dog crap in practice. And then all of a sudden pulls this top 10 uh, qualifying effort out here. Like if there are, if there are two drivers in the cup series that I would probably fade the most on tire on tracks where tires are most important and where grip is something that they have to try to, you know, uh, maintain throughout a long run. It's Eric Jones and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So if I can find matchups against both of those guys, I'm going to hit them. Um, I'm sort of interested in AJ Allmendinger. This is a guy that traditionally in the spring doesn't do too well, but had a good run here last fall. I think this could be an interesting spot. Uh, he's actually shown a little more speed towards the end than I expected. I think he'll be good with his tires. Um, and he obviously has a lot of room to make up. He'll have to make some smart decisions depending on how easy it is to pass. I don't expect it to be super easy. But given where he's starting, the price, I think I could find myself getting there a little bit and him um, having a decent day. The 5K range uh, through the rest, Carson Hosevar. Um, going to be the enemy of all the NASCAR drivers next year. If he keeps doing the shit he was pulling last night, uh, or yeah, uh, Friday, if you're watching this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I worry about his, his head space coming into Sunday as well. Like, you know, it's frustrating too weeks. because he shows speed and you go, this guy might have something, but then yep. he just does dumb stuff. And then it's just like, ultimately at the end of the day, that's, that's not somebody you want to attach your wagon well, to. It, Something that I've been thinking about since Friday night that he, he to me he's he's very reminiscent of Chastain when he was like first coming in when Chastain was still riding the 42 I believe it was his first year yeah. and you could see the talent like you could see the speed but he was just, he's he's literally like a kid in a go kart with no brakes is, yeah. what, is what it looks like like he's just like oh I'm going full send into this corner like half these guys. And, you know, yeah. until they can rein that back a little bit, like he's going to make a lot of enemies. But, you know, he's got speed. That's the thing. Yeah, I think in like three years, he could be one of the guys that we're talking about as like a dark horse for the final four, maybe yeah. five years. But he does have to learn how to like when to press, when to not press, because I think there's mm-hmm. going to be a point when he comes in where he's going to show speed and he's going to do dumb stuff. And then he's going to be like, oh, I can't be I can't be so crazy. And then he's going to pull it way too far back. And then he'll yeah. have to f- kind of push it forward. Like Ross, even last year was still playing with that. And then this year obviously started off well, but then he's still figuring out like how much to push without pushing too much. So yeah, I think, I think he and uh, Chastain should sit down and have a little combo about how to build that up. Uh, McDowell started 19th at 5,800, I think is compelling. Um, like, I don't think he's going to win the race or be even a, a huge factor, but like he could be a top 10 guy, have a nice day and moving up from 19th at sub 6K. I think that could be a way um, to to kind of save a little bit of salary and kind of make our lineups work. Uh, Corey LaJoy, Harrison Burton, Todd Gillen, Ryan Newman somehow is still here. Ty Dillon, JJ Yaley and <laughs> BJ McLeod. Um, yeah. So for hey, me, Ryan Newman throwing down some of the fastest laps in the uh, Cup Series. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's According fair. to Steve Letarte. Uh, Steve Latart loves himself some Ryan Newman. He loves Ryan Newman. Um, obviously the 6K range is gross. I like, like I said, I like McDowell. Um, I like, uh, who else did I say? I don't know. Is there I will say out of, jumping out, to you? out of the guys in these, in this 5K range, yeah. I, Harrison Burton to me is the one guy that I think could put together a decent run. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're basically going into this week with the same mentality that we did last week and just loading up on the Fords or like Penske and SHR because they have guys in their camp that are really good on this track. And so all of that trickles down to the rest <coughs> of the team and Burton threw together a decent practice you know, he's got a mediocre starting position, but again, just like Austin Sindrick, and honestly, he's probably a better play than Sindrick because you're saving, you know, almost a thousand dollars here because if he can get inside the top 20, like that, that's all you're hoping for. And maybe he can, you know, somehow luck into a top 15, even possibly a top 10. 
Yeah, and he's somebody that I always seem to gravitate gravitate towards in these like mile and a half tracks. Like, I don't know, I just I think he makes some sense for sure. Uh, okay, let's build a lineup. Just so, do it. Just just put them in. We already know. Oh. So that gives us. Uh, so it's going to be Harrison Burton. <laughs> uh, huh. All right, that's not too bad. Um, All right, yeah, I don't hate it. So that gives us seventy-two fifty for our final two. So we can get a little gross. We can do like the McDowell thing, and that gets us up to eighty-seven hundred. So we can do the Chastain. We can do the Gibbs if we want to be in that range. Uh, we so can I, also. I was just going to say, if we go in that direction, I feel like a guy like Chastain would probably be better than Gibbs just because we've yeah. seen it from him before where he can get to the front and win races. And it gives us like three legitimate potential winners. Yeah. The other thing we could do is like the Cindric Almarola or something, but. Um, I think getting Chastain and getting a potential winner is probably the move. Uh, McDowell. Yeah. It's pretty gross, but I like it. Uh, I think that was far too easy, so let's build one more. Yeah, I think we, as you were saying, like, let's try to do this one with just one of the, of the, the super high price guys and then see what we can kind of work out from there but the the difficulty is you probably want to pick the highest finishing or winner do you where are you are you is like christopher bell clearly the fourth option for you of the four man i i think he's i think he's a lot closer than what people think because this car has been great yeah. over the last round plus like mm -hmm. i think people are definitely discounting him uh I think he still offers some pretty decent value in the betting market just because this team has been fast. Um, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people are going to have them. I mean, if, the, if you're in, you know, max entry GPP tournament play, like I think bell is somebody that is a pivot from the rest of the guys, because I think it's clear just from everyone's perspective coming into tomorrow, it's, Byron Larson, Blaney, and those guys are all kind of in a group amongst themselves. And then Bell is on the outside looking in. But I personally, I think he's a lot closer to them than what people give him credit for. Just seeing how fast the car is and listening to a lot of his interviews, he has been extremely confident in his stuff. And, you know, confidence definitely shows on the track. And if, if he's able to put, all, put that all together, they make a couple of adjustments. I think he could be right there. Yeah. For me, if I'm going with one of the guys, like obviously Byron's compelling, but I think Blaney or or Bell are probably our pick from this range. Do you want to do the Bell thing and see if we can do something different, or should we just go to Blaney because we think he's going to win? <laughs> I trying to look at this objectively. Um, like obviously, I'm a, I'm a Blaney stand, so like clearly yeah. I like. I like Blaney, we're both but, holding 10 to um, one tickets. So like it's yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Let's I, diversify. I definitely think I'm going to push us. Chris. Yeah. Bell, let's let's get Christopher lineup. Bell in there because I don't think a lot of people are going to have that. Um. Now, my other question to you is, do we want more Toyota exposure if we're going this direction or do we want him to be kind of our difference maker? And then maybe we kind of fill out the rest of our lineup from there. Because we could do Denny or Truex. We could do um, well. Chastain. So on Denny, I thought it was really interesting. They talked about it during qualifying. They were mentioning how Denny is probably in I don't give an F mode and he's running his own race. Like he is out here to try to win and does not care about the playoffs. And we talked about this uh, when we recorded on Wednesday night. So like, I don't mind going there. Just this isn't necessarily Denny's best track type or mm -hmm. track in general. So, it, you know, it's hard for I think he could maintain position, potentially get a top five, but I don't really see him competing for a victory. Yeah, no, let's do. All right, let's then let's let's avoid there, because I think we're both kind of like for what we'd have to spend if we're going to spend the 10 five or uh, wait, where's yeah, 10 five. I'd rather just go up to Byron, who. Yes, yeah, that's kind of the way I $700 more, but 
Um, all right, so I want to do Joey Logano. Um, I know we both, you know, he's not your favorite driver, but we both expect a really strong day from him. And I think well, you know that that mofo is going to do something on pit road that gains him 15 spots. Uh huh. And put him put him third to try and black. And I guess we could do the Blaney thing if we think that's the duo that's going to win the race. But um, do you want to go to Briscoe, Almarola, or both? Or I don't hate that. Like I think both of those guys are going to have pretty good runs. I agree. I think they both have top 10 potential. And when you need to save some money, makes sense. Uh, I don't hate Dinger. Obviously, we did the McDowell thing. I don't mind going back to that. And I was just going to also... say, are we going to hitch our wagon to Harrison Burton this week? Just because of the salary? I mean, it just depends. Like, if we do that, that gives us 9,100. And then we can do the Keselowski thing, Kyle Bush. Um, so let's, what's what I'll do. I'll put that there. And so basically anyone from Keselowski down, what's our favorite option? That's basically both nine K or below. Um, so we both aren't super big into chase Elliott. We both like Ross Chastain. Um, I was just going to say, I love these guys. Like to me, the one who presents the best opportunity for a win is Chastain. Okay. And that gives us Dinger at 6,200, who I like. Uh, I don't like Stenhouse. I don't like Haley. No. Uh, I could. Yeah, do I don't well. mind going to Dinger here. Yeah, I think he's fun. So we have Bell who can win. Of the non-playoff drivers, if you made me make a short list, I think Chastain Logano would be on that of people that would actually win this race. Yeah, because who 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 is Chastain out there to help? Yeah, I think Chastain, I think Logano, <laughs> assuming Blaney's not there, I think Harvick, and then maybe Truex if his car has a good day. But everything we've seen, he's been like, I yeah. think his, his average finish since the playoffs started is like 18th. Like the fact that he even made it to it's potentially bad. make the final four is insane. Yeah, it's, it's atrocious. Okay, we did it. That works. Smashed. Um, let me, what I will do now is let's review our updated betting card, our current betting card. We'll give the people uh, a look at where we're at and then we'll make some decisions into, uh, where we're going. So I have Logano to top 10 at minus 125, Briscoe to top 10 at plus 160, Almarola to top 10 at three to one, Briscoe over Christopher Busher. Briscoe over Martin Truex, which is, I'm sure, much better now. Brad K oh, yeah. over Chase Elliott, which we'll see what that looks like. Yeah, I wonder how the books are going to adjust the odds knowing that Kozlowski didn't do the qualifying lap. Yeah, uh, probably not much. Um, just knowing yeah. where he's starting, and they'll probably uh, nickel and dime a little bit. We did add Byron to win the group at 3-1 to one over Larson, Blaney, and Bell. Which looking good now, looking good now. And then I took Briscoe over uh, KFB, which I'm happy with. You have Logano uh, to top 10. I'm going to roll it at top 10. Byron over Larson at plus 132. As you mentioned in Vegas, you've got a, even a better number. Ty Gibbs over Ross. I feel like that's pretty close. They both qualified pretty well. You did yeah. the Bell thing and the Byron thing, and then you did Briscoe over KFB as well. So that is where we sit right now. Let's talk odds. Um, the betting board is is kind of a mess, so we're going to cobble this together. Uh, we're going to head over yes. to Bet Rivers to get odds. Then we're going to head to Caesars. Um, we are recording this Saturday night at about uh, 1130 Eastern. Um, so the, the numbers are kind of all over the place. So Larson plus 275, Byron 325, Blaney 4 to 1. Christopher Bell five to one. These are all to win the race. So um, obviously, you know, if, if history has shown us anything, you have to win the race to win the championship. But uh, yep. there is a possibility that you they finish second, especially as Brian mentioned. If for like some reason Kevin Harvick's out front, and you know Blaney or Byron or whoever's behind him 
and no one's really tracking him down. He might not push super hard uh, to win the race as long as he stays out where he needs to stay out. So pro, I, I, I'm I'm going to be betting it as if the race winner has to win. the They have to win the race to win the championship. But I wouldn't fault anybody if you wanted a little more wiggle room um, yeah. to, to go that route. I will say, though, of the outright market, the only guy that I at this point would feel comfortable um, if if you wanted some exposure, like obviously you missed the best of a number, best of the number by a lot. But Kevin Harvick, to me, is the only person that the Cup Series championship four guys would potentially seed way to in winning or could potentially have a better car than them because of everything surrounding his retirement and, you know, all the like scuttlebutt that nascar allows the championship cars to be a little illegal and they let a lot of stuff skate by so that way they're better than everybody else um maybe they did the same thing for kevin harvick because that car looked extremely fast and outside of him i just don't see a world where one of the other non-championship guys is able to find victory lane against one of the championship drivers yeah like logano somewhat interesting but with blaney there if blaney is anywhere near the front i don't think he wins I don't hate yeah. Ross at 40 to one, but if I'm betting non playoff drivers, I'm going to bet them in f- top three, top five, top 10. Situations yeah. Cause I think there's better that. value in that for sure. I just like, yeah, like I said, I think the, I think the race winner comes from one of the championship four and maybe that doesn't happen, but it sure feels like it happens every year. And if you want to go with history, William Byron's winning after getting it on the pole. So and he's already won here earlier this year. His pit crew is incredible. Um, yeah, if I don't, I don't know. He just he he's screaming, "Bet me, bet me, bet me!" And I might just have to <laughs> pull the trigger. Uh, uh, speaking of values, though, Byron minus one thirty nine, Larson minus one sixty seven, Ryan Blaney, Christopher Bell to top three at plus money is kind of interesting. Given what we've seen, Harvick's doesn't possible. that just sound ridiculous, though? Yeah, but that shows There's you four where, guys that are how, how he, yeah. he's he's clearly viewed as the fourth. And yeah. we did that last year with Logano, and obviously got there, but he was in a position where, you know, obviously won Vegas, so he had a couple weeks to get everything ready. It was a little bit different situation. Yeah, and I almost feel like, I mean, obviously, I wasn't in on Larson. Uh, I kind of faded him with my Byron over Larson bet, but that's more value based. Um, like the fact that he put it on in the top two rows, and knowing how good the this team is at making in race adjustments, like it's almost like they were sandbagging coming mm-hmm. into here, and maybe they were trying some different things because although Larson w- is on record of saying like he wasn't doing anything for Phoenix, you bet your ass that his team was doing a ton of work in preparation for looking up different scenarios, different track conditions, all this other things coming into tomorrow. So, I mean, I, yeah, I tweeted it during practice. Like if you, if you listen to the bet, the board, you didn't get in on Larson and you're lucky because now I think is a good opportunity to gain some Larson exposure. If you don't already have it, because there's good value there on a car that should be competing up front all day. Yeah, and if you love Larson, but you can't stomach the number, you might be able to find a dance partner, maybe an, an NFL game, maybe a NFL future that you really love. Um, Just bet wanna... Verstappen and him. Like nobody is beating Verstappen, and like that's a way to do it. Um. All right. Uh, Ross. I was just gonna say. I don't know why one. I'm talking talking myself into this but we want to smash watermelons that's what we want to do (laughs) it's just he was so impressive here last year he obviously qualified well he looked good in practice um the briscoe man at 12 to 1 and chastain is 8 to 1 for a top three at caesars so you're getting some value I'm going to do it. Why not? Let's go. <laughs> it's the last race of the year. I'm I love watermelon. What's this top 5 price? Plus 350. Oh man, that's big. 
10 to one to top for two spots. of difference is pretty crazy, but that also yeah. tells you a little bit about where the books heads at in terms of setting all these lines. They expect the championship four to be at least yeah. in three of those spots. I just want to, speaking of that, because, yeah, when you look at last year, uh, only there was one non-playoff driver that finished in the top three, and that was Blaney. And, I mean, he was actually the best car. Yeah. These top ten odds are crazy. But also of extreme note. Mine. Mine t- minus one twelve to top ten for Ross is pretty interesting. That's actually really good because also when you look at last year's championship race, seven of the top ten finishers were non playoff. Well, obviously, duh. But of the top five, there was three non playoff guys that finished inside the top five. Yeah. Um. And now Briscoe them, is by the way so plus one hundred. To top 10. Oh. Chastain number is pretty good. Brad K is plus 120. Bubba at plus 120 to top 10, given where he's starting. Yeah. Almarola is plus 275, which is pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> it's because they know the, the pre. It's because practice to me is much more indicative of who has cars or who who is able to know what type of setup they're gonna have to run than a single lap run at a, at a short track in particular because tires are gonna they set up for a one lap run and i bet you that their fall off from in that particular setup in the qualifying setup would have been like you know multiple tenths so qualifying yeah that's great but that means nothing over the long run. Should we be betting Ryan Priest plus three seventy five, given where he's starting? Damn, and really? Given, despite looking a little slow initially, was able to find a lot of speed, and we we talked about our SHR session. Well, I mean, you don't have to twist my arm. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna bet the Chastain and the and the Priest, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I just I have Briscoe, I have Almarola. I'm not betting Harvick, um, but I am going to add Priest because um, you know if I didn't bet him, he would be the one guy that finishes in the top ten while my while Almarola is eleventh and Briscoe is twelfth. But yeah, Chastain almost... seems huh interesting. Ch- Chastain's number is interesting. I don't really. Yeah. Uh, I can head over to Caesars. Caesars is a mess. No top tens. They have oh, top yeah, they five. Don't, they don't have top tens. Well, what's let's see. Top three finish. It's only eight there. to one for uh, Chastain, okay. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then his top five finish is four to one. So if you like his top better. five. But it's still, you know, ten to one versus four to one. So, yeah, um, they have top twenties this week at Bet Rivers. Yeah, but they're terrible. <laughs> Is there anything we can do? BJ McLeod plus three twenty five. <laughs> Not happening. Gillen to top twenty. Oh, Harrison Burton minus one twelve. I'm hitting that. Let's go. Isn't Gillen starting like 15th? Way to go, Bet Rivers. We need no prices on these, by the way, because imagine in the truck series, for instance, Corey Himes, like not top 10 price, yeah. would have been like plus a thousand. Hmm. Yeah, like bet Eric Jones and not top 10 or not top 20. I was going to say, I would bet Eric Jones and not top 20. Harrison Burton was 15th and five lap, but then got slower in 22, 18, and 20. That's uh, all right. 
I need a top 20. I know. That's not even half the field. There's only 36 cars running. Interesting. Oh, man. If I could find... So I just saw a couple of guys that I would... Oh, they have, they have head-to-heads right now. And, of course, they're only playoff guys. Are they only have four of them? Let's go over here and we'll just go to head-to-head market over here. Yeah, I will say uh, over here in Vegas, so far the best market I've seen for head-to-heads has got to be the Superbook. They, I think I saw like 20 different matchups, which is awesome. I mean, the numbers aren't aren't all the greatest, but... Yeah. So Blaney plus 135 versus Larson. Um, Kyle Busch is plus money versus Chris Busher. Reddick is plus money versus Denny. Logano plus 175 versus Harvick is really <laughs> interesting. Yeah, but honestly, Har- Harvick probably has the best Ford. Almarola plus 140 versus Bubba. That's a lot of track position he's got to make up, though. I know Bubba oh, is not sure. good here, but he's got a lot of cars to get through. Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's look at manufacturer stuff. Hopefully they actually have it. Probably not. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they have that. Ford's two to one to win the race. Uh, you'd get Blaney and Harvick. That's actually not that bad. Toyota's plus two seventy. If you think Truex or uh, yeah, I was gonna say you would have to think that Denny and Truex have a shot. Yeah. That Ford that Ford price actually isn't that bad when you get both. Harvick and if you Blaney. want Harvick, you can get Harvick to win and Lewis Hamilton to podium at 17 to 1. It's not terrible. I know nothing I like about a non I don't like a non uh a non playoff driver to win, but 17 to 1 if you're like I have to bet Harvick this week, that's that's a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, and if I if I'm not mistaken, uh, Hamilton looked a lot better during their last race, right? Yeah, and he like, didn't t- he finish third, I think, or something. Traditionally, does pretty well at uh, in Brazil. So, like for example, podium finish, Hamilton is plus one sixty. So it's seven to one plus one sixty. That's considering considering it usually is like ten points short. That is actually pretty decent. Um, let's see, Motorsports Oz, NASCAR Cup Futures. Yeah. Larson plus 150, Blaney plus 220, Byron 250, and then Bell at 350. Bell is like the only one I would even consider, and even at that point, plus 350, I don't love that. That goes to the... Here, let's go back to... I'm going to go back to Caesars real quick and look at that group matchups again. Oh, so if you okay. think Bell... If yeah, if you think Bell is going to Oh, they they've they've adjusted the prices. So Bell is now plus three thirty in, in the group. Of course he is. Yeah, it's group G. Yeah. We got Byron at what three to one and you got Bell at what three four plus four twenty. Oh yeah. That's... I got him at plus four fifty out here in Vegas, I think, or plus four forty. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it, even if I didn't think that that Bell was going to have a chance, like just to get in, just to get action, the best possible number on one of the guys that's competing for the championship. To me, that was the best way to approach that. Blaney and Bell both finish in the top five, two to one. That's really interesting. Let's see. Bell is minus 140. Blaney is minus 250. I'll pull up a parlay calculator and give you true odds. And I was just going to say, of course, you can't you can't parlay that. No. Come but... on, sports books. Let's go. You're you're What'd making you strides. What, but What are the odds? Minus 130, minus oh, 250? Yeah. 
Oh, what the hell did I just do? Uh, so that would be pl like plus 150. So you're getting two to one on that. It's pretty damn good. Um, and I don't hate the Larson Byron if you think it's going to be a re recreation of so many of the races that we've seen this year. They both have to finish in the top three. Plus 350. Really not that bad. Because how many times have we seen them competing up at the up at the front? Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do you manufacture? Especially considering Larson is minus 250 and Byron is minus 200. It's a top three. Yeah. I was going to see if I could get like a way to even bump that up a little bit more. All right. I, I got to get some kind of Harvick exposure here. Okay. Over on Bet Rivers, they have a group. Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, Daniel Suarez, Ryan Priest. Priest is three Priest is three to one. I like that a lot. I'm gonna add that. Me too. Who would have guessed Ryan Priest is playing a prominent role on my final betting card of the year? <laughs> It's very fitting. We got yeah. I just love to see it. Especially, I'm pretty sure I had Priest. Uh, like it, he was one of the guys I really liked for the 500 this year. So it comes full circle. Yep. And yeah, like obviously. I am fully shotgunning the board here because and like we I'm bet already... he's the top 10, but he could get like 15th and still win this group. Oh no, exactly. It's the same reason why I hit the, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I had text you or I, I tweeted about it where I bet McDowell in a group against like Stenhouse Dinger and somebody else at like plus three ten or something. The number was just because he could finish 21st and still finish ahead of all of those guys. So, uh, it's, I kind of like attacking the board like that from the non-playoff drivers because you're not you don't have to hope for them to run good necessarily to actually cash yeah. your bet. What do you think about Logano at 325 against Truex, Hamlin, and Reddick? It's probably not good enough, huh? Given what the race odds to win and stuff. Well, especially honestly, I feel like he should he should be the lone guy that has the longest odds. He should not be tied with Reddick because when you look at what they did during practice and the fact yeah. that qualifying Logano was way off their pace. And Logano for like a top five, which is probably what he would need is, or at least oh, the expected finish. Plus yeah. 250. So it's not bad. Yeah. I know I'm definitely not going out with a massive Logano card. There's no way. Yeah. Oh, you can bet drivers to finish on the lead lap. But we need uh, no prices. Yeah. Damn Ty it. Dillon at plus 225. Gillen at minus 106. Burton at minus 112. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate Burton, but the problem is, is that like the lead guys are going oh, to go. be extremely fast so this is all on our bet rivers top toyota christopher bell minus 106 truex for if you believe in truex and hamlin Shit. and you don't like uh chris bell this week four to one and four and a half to one is pretty interesting um yeah i'm sad i i i almost hit denny in that market he was seven to one early in the week harvick plus 225 to top four i don't hate i think that's if you want some harvick that's that might be the best way to get Harvick yeah. exposure. Yeah. Because he doesn't have to Blaney, win for that. Blaney has struggles. Then, yeah. Logano at 8 to 1 is interesting. Obviously, I think Blaney <laughs> has to win. So, 
Briscoe. Oh 15. yeah, and, re- and and real quick, just just for reference, uh, twenty one cars finished on the lead lap last year okay. during this race. So, so like a top twenty is it, probably not getting there. Yeah, a top twenty is a lead lap finish, and then in the spring, twenty four guys finished on the lead lap. So the car number of the race winner even is two uh, minus two hundred, and so yeah, if you if you like Kyle Larson plus one fifty, yeah, but that only gives you uh, Kyle Larson. Yeah, that only gives you Larson or that Denny. Only, yeah, which yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Car number of race winner under eleven and a half plus one forty four. That gets you, and yeah, that, that, that gets get you me. Larson and Harvick. Yeah, yeah. I would much rather bet the over eleven and a half because that gives you three of the four Playoff championship drivers. guys. Yeah. Any driver to win stage one and stage two and win the race five twenty five. That that doesn't. Seem no, <laughs> no, no way. I'm not playing playing with that fire. No. <sighs> All right. Well, I think. I think that might do it. Oh, it looks like we're getting... Uh, it's all basically the same. I still don't have any any Larson exposure. I have no outrights. I have... The only exposure I have to any of the championship cars is Byron in, in the group at 3-1. to one. My my exposure is like eighty percent Chase Briscoe, <laughs> and then Almarola right reason one Joey Logano bet. <laughs> so oh, no. stupid! <laughs> so stupid! Oh, this is gonna end very oh. well for us. I guess I should change my tag back to SHR Super Fan. <laughs> um, fuck. If you guys have thoughts. Drop them in the comments. We will re come back before um, yeah. before the race tomorrow for sure and, and give you some Tell thought. us who you like to win the championship. Who's winning the race? Yeah. Is it the same person? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, you know, I I mean, I expect it to be the same as we've had it in years past. Yeah, let us but... know in the comments. Race winner, championship winner, and if it's the same person, obviously just put that. Brian and I will be back um, to recap the championship, to recap the season, to give you all of our thoughts on all of the nonsense, talk about whatever happens tomorrow, because I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure it'll be exciting and I'm sure it'll be crazy. Um, and then we will, like I said, we'll take be taking a break for a while. Um, but stay subscribed because we will be putting out content between now yes. and next season. And then obviously... Once February rolls around and the Super Bowl of NASCAR is ready to go, uh, Brian and I will be back. We'll be strapped in and we'll be ready for a full season. Appreciate everybody who's been along for the ride. Um, all the likes, all the subs, all the you know questions and interactions on Twitter and all that good stuff. We, it's much, much appreciated. Um, hopefully you guys crushed it this season. For Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. For the final time, enjoy the hell out of the championship. Uh, Hopefully we get a great race. Go Uh, Ryan Blaney. Hopefully Ryan Blaney is in victory lane um, and is winning his first championship. For Brian Twining, I'm Kyle Robert. We'll talk to you next time. (laughs) 